Okay guys, here we are for our third video now. Um, so they've had a lot of requests on how we can use this dough to make the fatigue okay? So basically we're using the same dough that we did for the hobs up, okay? Um, but we're probably just gonna cook it a little bit differently and um, we're gonna obviously roll it out a little bit differently, okay? So look, I've got another batch here that I've made. Um, now this one is super duper bubbly. You're gonna have a look at that. Look how bubbly that one's come out. Okay, now look, everyone's gonna get different results, okay? So everyone's using different types of flour. Everyone's using, you know, uh, different types of uh, uh, temperatures. Like wherever you're storing your flour is gonna be different. The humidity in the air. So you're gonna get a little bit of differences, okay, in this. So I wouldn't be getting too stressed out. If we just try and follow the recipe, we'll get there. So I'm just gonna get a bit of a, some flour on my bench here, okay? Uh, just some flour, we'll sieve it out. Okay. And that should be enough. Okay, and we'll just tip this out. Now, I'm just gonna use half of this today for this recipe. Okay, so I'll just get, get it all out. And you can just see how stretchy all that is, okay? So that's all the gluten, all the air that's been, air that's been getting caught up in that dough. All right, so I'm gonna cut about half of this, like I've done last time. All right, I've got the scraper. Like I said, I find the scraper really helpful with this sort of wet dough. And we'll just get this dough that we're not gonna use, one side, and we'll get the other half we're not gonna use. Maybe I'll take this one and just put that back in the container. Okay, so we'll just close that up. and just put the lid back on that one. And I'll use this a little bit later. Okay, so I'll just put that away. All right, so I've just got the half here. So basically this time, we're probably gonna add a little bit more flour because we're gonna have to work with this a little bit more, okay? So just enough sprinkle just to give this a bit of a work. Now, some people are getting lumps in their, in their dough, I've been hearing, so just basically just give that a good pat down. Just so incorporate it a bit in with the flour, uh, with the dough, sorry. So what we're gonna do, just give that a bit of a, I like to get my, my fingers and just go sort of go through that and you can see the bubbles just sort of popping out from this dough and we're gonna roll it, okay? So I'll try and do this as much by hand, but when you get the scraper and we we'll just get underneath it. And we're just gonna give this, try not to get too much flour on this, okay? And just give it a roll. And we roll this around. So I'm trying to get this more also in a nice rectangular kind of roll, okay? And we'll just roll it around as best you can, okay? Now I know it's wet, but again, this is gonna work out really well. Okay, so we'll just keep on working the tension in this dough, rolling it around. Rolling it around. I get a little bit more flour underneath, and just a bit on the hands. All right, just to be able to lift that up and roll that. Okay, so the Maltese stira, okay, similar to the Maltese bread, obviously flatter, and it's in the shape of a ring. Okay, so this is beautiful to have with hospitalite, uh, or we can uh, bake some thinly sliced potatoes and make a nice sort of sandwich out of it, so to speak, okay? All right, baking dish. Again, some people have been saying that their dough's been sticking to the pan, so I just get a baking dish. I like to get some flour on this one, okay? And we'll just give a bit of a, a sprinkle. All right, just to help it not stick to the pan and stick to the paper, okay? So that's pretty much it. Now, this is the tricky part here. We're gonna get this basically onto the dough, um, the dough get the dough on, onto, the, onto the dish. Let's 
trying to get some flour there just to loosen it up. Trying to get under and lift it up. Under and lift it up. That's it. So I'm just going to put that on the dough. Oh, sorry, on the dish. And we're just going to turn that around like that. Okay, so once we've got it on the dish, what you want to do is just basically get this dough and form it into a ring, okay? Now, I've got a, a round dish just to help me shape this a bit better. And all we're going to do is just put it over like that and basically fold it onto itself, okay? So get the dough and just give a bit of a twist. Stretch it out. And let's just try and get it to twist onto itself, okay? So again, if it starts sticking a bit too much, I like just to rub some flour on my hands and just twist it in. Okay, so that's pretty much it guys. What I'll do now is I'll get the oven going. Now, my oven does take a little while, probably take about 40 to an hour to get it to the right temperature. I'm gonna to go to 250 again, okay? Because I do wanna get that sort of crusty top and that soft inside. So I reckon this time we're gonna be cooking this for about more the 40 minute mark. Um, just keep an eye on it. Everyone has different likes of how they like their top, I do like mine to be quite darkened and I do like some of the burnt parts to be often. Um, like, I just think it tastes kind of good. So if you get some of those black parts I wouldn't be throwing out, I definitely like it with the, with the, uh, with the burnt part. But not everyone's the same. Okay, so look, you can see there, I've got a good ring. That's pretty much what it's looking like at this stage. Um, I'll just leave this for an hour. Um, just reshape it a bit before it goes into the oven and um, we'll come back when it's coming out of the oven. Okay guys, we'll talk soon. Okay guys, so the oven is now ready. Um, so that's how the fritura is uh, looking, okay? So it has risen a bit. What I like to do is get one of those egg rings, the heat proof ones where you cook your eggs in and put that in the middle, okay? And that's just basically just gonna, gonna help it uh, keep that nice circle ring in the middle. Now I'm just gonna get the just gonna get the uh, some flour, put it on the scraper and again similar to when we were doing the multi thread, we're just gonna go around and I'm just gonna tuck in the edges a bit, okay? We just want you really want to get a nice curvature on the edge of this bread, okay? So put some flour there on the side. So you can see, in the whole process, I haven't even used a cup extra of flour, okay? So, let's go around there, give it a good tuck in. And this will now go into the oven, it's at 250, and like I said, look, I'll keep my eye on it. I reckon this is probably gonna take somewhere between 40 to 50 minutes. I don't think this will go to full hour. I don't want it to get too brown on the top, okay? But we still want that crunch on the on the surface. So make sure you still include the um, steaming tray in the middle, okay? And we'll take that out after about 15, 20 minutes. We'll take that out and we'll continue cooking it. Okay, welcome back guys. So we had the fatigue right and here it is, okay? Come out real good, okay? So that basically ended up being dead on 40 minutes on 250 in the oven, okay? And then we basically left uh, the, the door ajar, okay? For about 30, 40 minutes after that, and now I can pick this up, and it's um, easy to handle. Okay, so it's important to leave it for that um, 30 minutes or so with the door ajar, like I said, helps get that crunch on the top. So let's just give this a bit of a cut, okay? Let's have a listen, okay? Cut it all the way around. And you 
might find that little egg ring. Okay, I'll cook it with it. It might get a little bit stuck. Just push it out with a knife. I've already done that. Comes out fairly easy. Okay, now look at this. Absolutely unbelievable. Now look at those holes. Look at those holes. Alright. Amazing aeration in this. So all I'm going to do now guys, is I'll get the uh, good old conserva, the tomato paste. I'm going to smother this, smother this on. Here we go. Make sure we get a lot of this in. Okay, smother it on. Really nice, generous smother there. Get it in those holes. Alright, get some olive oil. Bit of a dash of olive oil. Some tuna. Alright, this is taking me right back to the beaches of Malta, eh? In summer. Hanging out on the beach, having one of these fingers with hot bazate. Unbelievable. My kids, surprisingly, actually love this stuff, right? They've only been to Malta once, my kids. They actually love it. All right, so we've got some tomatoes. I get some olives. On that, now I've got some lettuce. Chopped up lettuce nice and fine. And finally, I like a bit of gherkins. It gives it a nice bit of a sweet sweetness to it. Um, you can find the pickled uh, jardinera, I think they call it, with the carrots and the, and the cauliflower. And I actually forgot my pepper. So it'd be good to get some pepper, get some little cracked pepper on top. So in the meantime, I'll just get a little bit more of this tomato paste. Right on top here on the top part. On here. How's that looking guys? Is it making you hungry at home? There you go. I've got to hand it over the cracked pepper. There you go. Put a cracked pepper on top. And the last drizzle, a bit more olive oil. Just a tiny bit on top. And that, my friends, is the Fira with the hot bazate. Just like that. We'll put that on top and give that a bit of a slice. So there you go. Guys, I hope you enjoy it. It looks absolutely spectacular. Can't wait to dig in. I'm gonna cut this up and give these to my kids and I'm sure it's going to get devoured really really quickly. So guys thanks again for tuning in, don't forget to like, give, hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. My aim is to try and get the whole world cooking Maltese bread in this pandemic lockdown. So share it, love, share the love, hit the subscribe, hit the like and let's get this ranked number one on YouTube for Maltese bread. Thanks again for tuning in. See you guys till the next time. Bye.